Hey, Organistas, welcome back to my channel. Wait, where are you? Where are you? Wait, I can't see you. I, I can't see you. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, hi. Hi, there you are. <laughs> this is my largest Cattleya in my collection. This is a large specimen of a plant. This is RLC. George King, clonal name Serendipity. It does have an award from the American Orchid Society. This baby is in a 10 inch pot. There's at least 40 pseudobulbs in this pot and growing out of the pot. And I thought we would take a little look at it today and talk about this plant because it's blooming early. This plant normally blooms for me late October, 1st of November. So I was really shocked when I saw buds coming up out of this plant in um, early uh, September. Well, no, actually, yeah, early September, I noticed these buds popping up. <laughs> the plant was turned towards the window, so I totally missed them in the flower sheath. The first one opened on September 13th, and the second one opened on September 17th. Today is October the 2nd, so they've been open a couple weeks. And I just thought it'd be fun to show you this specimen plant. I really was waiting until November to do this video, but I think the plant had other things in mind for me. So let's talk about it. This was a cross that was done in 1970 between the famous white Cattleya Bob Betts and an RLC buttercup. It was registered with or, or by the gentleman named G.A. King. There's another popular clonal name called Southern Cross that is a solid yellow, and then in the lip is some orange in the throat of that cross. And I'll put a picture up so you can see that. Anytime you cross a white with a yellow, it's no telling what you could get. You could get um, peachy salmon colors like you see here in this one, or you could get yellow. You can sometimes get whites as well. The only ones that I'm aware of that were Maricloned was the Serendipity and the Southern Cross. This is a unifoliate Cattleya, which means that there's one uh, leaf per pseudobulb. And when this Cattleya blooms for me, you will get anywhere from two to four flowers per pseudobulb per inflorescence. The most that I have gotten is three on any given pseudobulb. The most number of flowers thus far that I've ever had on this plant is nine opened at one time. And this one for me, I probably had this, I'm going to guess close to 20 years. Um, I have this recorded in a database that I can't access right now because I've had to switch computers and I haven't downloaded that information or uploaded that information into the new computer as of yet. So I'm going to say I've had this probably 20 years, um, maybe less than that. I really don't remember off the top of my head. I do know that this plant bloomed for me for the very first time in 2018. So I would have gotten this as a very young plant, and it took quite a while to grow it to maturity to bloom. The smell of the bloom. Oh, my goodness. It smells all day long strong in the morning you can smell it when you walk by the plant and smell it a few feet away it's nothing that's going to overpower you it has to me um a spicy smell floral but more hints of a spice to me than anything else um it's kind of reminding me sometimes of of i don't know it's been a while since i've chewed gum um juicy fruit it kind of reminds me you know, of, of kind of a smell like that, a little spicy, a little sweet. Um, let's see here. What else can I tell you about this? I do have some notes uh, written down over here beside of me that I didn't want to forget uh, to talk about on this, on this plant. Now, one of the things, I have never divided this plant since I've had it. And I just kind of really don't want to. I wanted to see what kind of plant, what size plant was I going to be able to grow indoors in front of a window? This one has never been grown outside ever. 
It's always been indoors in windows. Southern exposure, uh, depending upon the house that I lived in at the time, it is you it's not direct sun coming in the southern window but it's filtered but it's still southern so i do have to be very careful when i moved into the house that i'm in now we moved in december of 2022 so i had to get adjusted to the lighting that was coming into the house and i put this in a very large southern window and i did get some sunburn on some of the leaves at least i got some that were starting to sunburn and I had to quickly adapt. Um, let's see here. We've had lots of new pseudobulbs this year growing. Normally, like I said, uh, I think I've said this already, this normally blooms for me at the end of October and November. I'm hoping to still get some flowers because back here in the back, there is lots of pseudobulbs back here some of these back bulbs have started growing. So I have a mature pseudobulb here with a flower sheath, and I have two more that are still growing that have flower sheaths in it. Um, really thought I was gonna have some more. There's one around the front here. Uh, let's see here, this one, this one right here that does not have a flower sheath in it, but this is still a new growth. There is a new growth coming out right here. I actually lost two growths on this plant. Oh, and there's one coming out right here too. I lost two this year because they were coming off of the side and starting to grow like this one here, that is way down here. And I would pick it up like this by the, the pot to pick it up after I've watered it and I'd end up breaking those off. So really disappointing. Um, but I gave it plenty of sea kelp and we were able to get more growth on it. There's lots of new roots that are growing down here in the media as well. How often do I water this? Okay. I started keeping track of how often I water on a very strenuous, rigorous, strict, whatever you want to call it. Um, Back in April, I started growing my collection from 20 to now, I think I'm close to probably 100, maybe. I haven't counted recently. And I started back in April religiously marking down for every plant what I was watering them and when I watered them. So this plant gets watered anywhere from two week, every two weeks to every month. Yeah every month. I, I did say that. You heard me right. Once a month. There has been times where this plant has been watered once a month and the plant has not suffered. It's okay. It has a lot of pseudobulbs that can store nutrients and store water and I watch the pseudobulbs. This was last watered on September the 20th. These pseudobulbs are telling me now and hopefully you can get in here and see the ridges that are starting to form in the pseudobulbs. This is telling me it's time to water this. I like to have my pseudobulbs nice and plump. And especially with it flowering, it's gonna be using a lot more water, needs more water. So it is time to water this. I didn't water it today because I wanted to do the video and didn't wanna deal with water all out on the countertop. So when we're done with the video, this will definitely get watered. I'll look back and see when it was last fertilized and determine whether it needs a weak solution of fertilizer. Right now I'm fertilizing about an eighth of a teaspoon per gallon of water. It is towards the end of the growing season. And so I'm not going to fertilize as heavily as I would have in the summer. Hey guys, I wanted to pop back in. We were discussing watering. And I just wanted to make a comment that, yes, I said once a month. Another reason for that is this is a 10 inch pot. If I watered this plant every week, the center of the pot would never dry out. It would constantly be wet and I would then have root rot. So that is another reason why I go longer between waterings for this big plant. 
I just wanted to jump in and pause the video and make that comment that I didn't do in the previous segment of the video. Let, let's talk about the color of these blooms here. And what I have done is I've taken a video and we'll switch over to the video so that you can see the colorations and all the many colors that are in this Cattleya. If you look at the top of the lip and all of the wonderful uh, dark peaches and pinks and rose colors into the bright uh, golden yellows that are in it, the petals and the sepals are all in that wonderful light peach color, salmony color. And I just think it is an absolutely beautiful flower. Let me know in the comments do you guys have this flower? Do you love it? How would you describe the fragrance? Leave me some comments on, and, and let me know too, how do you take care of it? Um, all of us here at Forever Orchids would love to read those comments and read how others that have this plant, how are you taking care of it? Because I grow indoors. All right, if I turn the plant this way, you start seeing a lot of the pseudobulbs here, they're going at an angle. They're not upright and straight. Well, they're growing towards the light. So what I have to do with plants indoors is I have to stake them and I have to tie them up. And I like to use the green Velcro strips that you can get at your local hardware stores, your big box stores. You can buy it on Amazon. And I will stake and tie together pseudobulbs to try to help contain the plant and keep it from all falling over this way as well off of the pot and just give it a little bit more structure. Now, I do that a lot with the new growth. I totally missed this new growth here because it was up towards the window. So there's, I could tie this one. I can't get it to come here, but I could tie this one up this way so that it will continue growing up instead of coming out this way. I like for my orchids to be as tidy as I can. And, and it's really a reason to do that for me is when you're growing in windows, you don't have a lot of space. There's just not a lot of space on a windowsill. And this one, of course, obviously is not on a windowsill. This one grows on a plant stand that is right up next to the window so it can get as much light as possible. Okay. I think we've covered the majority of this plant. If I do get more blooms this year, um, I do feel like what happened was this suit that is in bloom now, this suitable matured first. I would probably have more blooms right now had I not knocked off, and I keep beating myself up for that, if I hadn't have knocked off the other new growths. So I'm having to wait until others will end up maturing, and hopefully I can still get around. Um, Gosh, instead of the end of October, since we're already October the 2nd, and I don't see right now any buds coming out of this sheath here, there's a little something that might be starting that I'll have to keep an eye on over the next couple of weeks. I can barely see something down here in the bottom so that hopefully, and, and maybe when these two bloom, it'll end up being maybe later in the winter that I'll get a flush of more blooms at which time, of course, we'll take a look at them. Um, the plant here has uh, definitely showing its wear and tear of being moved several times and over the years. Um, really, I have only lost, uh, let me see here, there's like two pseudobulbs that don't have leaves on them. Back here in the back, here's a very small one here. This one has a leaf. Then there's one, two. Oh, here's a third one that there's no leaf for up here in the front. Um, for the most part, these leaves have held on for years. For years. Uh, leaf here. This is what happens when you live with cats. Please tell me in the comments how to stop the cats from chewing on my orchids. Um, I would have loved to have grown this one. To where I, it was a large specimen to where I could get a cultural, cultural award from the American Orchid Society. That is given 
to the overall plant and to the grower. I would have loved to have gotten that. Nope. Thanks to a little cat called Nugget. Ain't gonna happen. Won't happen. So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this orchid. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do remember, like and subscribe. Keep track of all of my orchids in my collection. Some videos that I have coming up uh, towards the end of October, I have another Orchid Society show uh, several hours from here that I will drive to and film that for you guys to see. Um, I have an update that I want to do. I did a haul earlier this year from Sunset Valley Orchids and I want to do an update of those orchids. And in fact, I got one blooming. The blooms are just opening as of yesterday and today. They are opening. So hopefully later in this week, I will be able to do that video and get that published and uploaded in a week um, is my plans right now. So those are some upcoming videos that I have. And again, guys, happy orchid growing. And until next time, bye.